feedback to relay to our development team to make our software even better for upcoming releases. We were born out of the E. coli lab of Dr. Fred Blattner, who is a professor of genetics at the University of Wisconsin in 1984. We built a strong reputation with our early products during the Sanger sequencing years. That continues on today. Now, while still offering these classic sequence assembly and analysis tools, we have expanded into the realms of next-gen sequencing, supporting all major next-gen sequencing platforms. In addition, we also now offer software to assist in the work of structural biologists, offering some tools for 3D macromolecular visualization, as well as some protein structure prediction tools. As a company, we are the leader in citations in peer-reviewed journals. For the past 30 years, more, research have, more researchers have cited DNA Star software in scientific journals than any other sequence analysis software, which really speaks to the level of trust that our customer base places in our tools. We then put a lot of effort into providing excellent support to these customers. So in addition to phone, email, and chat support, we have uh, many webinars like this one, uh, as well as recordings of these webinars. We have written tutorials and online help for each software application. And we also have hundreds of videos on our website offering short three to five minute software tutorials on specific topics. So I'd encourage you to check out our video library as well. Now specific to those customers that are interested in next-gen sequencing, we do support customers across all major sequencing technologies and a wide variety of project types. From targeted resequencing to whole genomes, our powerful software is very versatile and, again, comes with a strong DNA SAR support network for all of these tools. So I spoke a little bit about our company history earlier, and traditionally all of our software uh, that we've developed since we began has been available on a desktop computer. We've designed this software to be able to run on the hardware available to most researchers. And for detailed information on our hardware technical requirements, you can get information from our website. But a computer configured to run some of these complex next-gen assemblies will cost maybe a couple thousand dollars um, and runs on a, a little higher setup than, than a traditional desktop computer for molecular biology workflows. Uh, so knowing this, in May of 2013, we first expanded our traditional software offering and gave users access to DNA Star software on the Amazon cloud for the first time, which eliminated uh, a lot of these hardware restrictions. Since this initial cloud launch, we have evolved alongside Amazon to produce several different options for NGS assembly and analysis on the cloud. Now, currently, our cloud options include the DNA Star Cloud Desktop, which utilizes Amazon Workspaces to create a virtual desktop environment where you can run DNA Star software. DNA Star Cloud Data Drive for fast and easy data upload and download, and DNA Star Cloud assemblies for running multiple parallel NGS projects. And I'll be showing you each of these utilities in detail in today's presentation. At the beginning here, I also want to briefly mention our NovaFold application as another example of how we utilize cloud-to-ground integration and leverage the power of the Amazon Cloud and some of our newer software tools. So NovaFold is our application for protein structure prediction, allowing you to predict the 3D protein structure from a protein sequence without a known crystal structure. After submitting the protein sequence to the NovaFold application, a cluster of computers are spun up on the Amazon cloud to perform the computationally intensive task of creating these prediction models. The resulting prediction models are then returned to the desktop computer for analysis. So we have a full webinar that I've done uh, just on NovaFold on our webinars page if you're doing any protein work and interested in that. Like I said, I just wanted to touch on NovaFold today uh, to give you an idea of our, our fourth cloud utility here. Um, but today, we'll just be focused on DNA Star Cloud Desktop, Assemblies, and the Data Drive as they are the tools that facilitate our next-gen sequencing workflows. So first, I'd like to discuss DNA Star software on Amazon Workspaces. Now, Amazon Workspaces is an Amazon application that allows users to access a Windows virtual machine. And you can access this machine from a PC or Mac computer, 
as well as from your iPad, Android, and Fire tablets. Amazon has recently developed the Workspaces service as a more cost-effective cloud computing option. With just a few clicks in the Amazon Web Services Management Console, customers can provision a high-quality cloud desktop experience for any number of users at a cost that is highly competitive with traditional desktops and about half the cost of most virtual desktop infrastructure solutions. So at DNA Star, we use workspaces as a means to host the DNA Star Cloud desktop, which gives you access to all DNA Star applications from anywhere with an internet connection, as opposed to being tethered to your work computer with a single software license installed, for example. You can purchase access to DNA Star software on Amazon Workspaces in increments of time ranging from a week, a month, or a year. Now, DNA Star Cloud Assemblies is our cloud application for easily running multiple parallel next-gen assemblies. This can be used in conjunction with Amazon Workspaces if you're working with a project that needs some extra computing power to execute some large assembly projects, or it can be used as a desktop cloud interfacing tool. Using this tool alleviates any hardware restrictions you may have when it comes to next-gen assembly projects. The powerful cloud hardware will not only let you run any size assembly project, but also run them simultaneously. So if you're not already set up with a powerful hardware system in your lab, this can be an extremely cost-effective way to get your assemblies completed quickly without investing thousands of dollars into configuring your hardware setup. These cloud assemblies are purchased individually, uh, so Think of it like a credit system, uh, and your sales rep can help you determine what the best combination of cloud assemblies and time on Amazon Workspaces could be used to quickly complete your NGS data analysis project on the cloud. And then finally, our DNA Star Cloud Data Drive is our tool for fast and easy transfer of data to and from the cloud. You can utilize this data drive to move data to your Workspaces computer, as well as use the drive to store and manage data for your assembly projects, as well as look at the completed assembly projects. The DNA Star Cloud data drive comes with any purchase of a DNA Star Cloud tool, as it really does facilitate all your data transfer needs. In taking a look at this diagram, we can gain an understanding of the interaction between the assemblies on the cloud feature and the cloud data drive whether this is housed on an Amazon workspace or on your desktop computer. And we upload necessary data to the data drive, which interfaces with the assemblies on the cloud functionality. After these assemblies are complete, assembly files are returned to the data drive, which can then be downloaded onto the desktop for further analysis. Now you might be wondering how this particular assemblies pathway interacts with Amazon workspaces. And Workspaces is designed to support the vast majority of your analysis needs. Uh, the standard Amazon computer used for Workspaces will support your NGS work, um, including small NGS assemblies, such as bacteria. Uh, but for larger assemblies, we do recommend using this multiple assemblies on the cloud capability um, as doing this cloud-to-ground integration here in this particular pathway allows you to access some larger computers more appropriate for um, some of these big, complex NGS assemblies. Now, since we are focused on next-gen sequencing projects for this webinar, I'm also going to introduce you to a couple of our downstream applications for visualizing our assembly results and analyzing our projects. So what you're seeing on the screen is our SeekMan Pro application, which is our application for your assembly visualization. And I'll also be showing you our ArrayStar application as well, which allows you to do some um, large-scale, multi-sample uh, comparison projects. So let me introduce the workflow that we'll be going through today, and then we'll go ahead and get right into the software. So first, I'll show you how to set up your NGS assembly projects in the DNA Star Cloud Assemblies tool, and then show you how to manage your data using the DNA Star Cloud data drive. Then I'll go ahead and show you our tools for downstream analysis on Amazon Workspaces. So if I get out of my PowerPoint here, I can open up my desktop. 
And the first application I'd like to introduce you to today is our DNA Star Navigator. And the DNA Star Navigator is your guide to all of our DNA Star applications. So in this hub, you can see a list of all the applications available to you, as well as access resources specific to each of these applications. So if I hover over any application within the Navigator, I can see links to videos, tutorials, and FAQs specific to that application. Uh, last nice feature of the Navigator is the ability to access the integrated help system, uh, which allows you to search topics across all of our applications. Uh, so you can see all the applications listed on the side here and the nice search tool here. Uh, you can also click on any application within the Navigator to directly launch that application. And so in looking at the screen here, we can see within the Navigator that we have a whole selection dedicated to those four cloud applications that I was discussing. So from the Navigator, I'm going to go ahead and open up our cloud assemblies functionality here. So for those of you who are familiar with DNA Star tools, you can see that this opens up our SeqBan NGen application, which is our application for next-gen sequence assembly and analysis. From the welcome screen here, I'm going to go ahead and select assemblies on the cloud. And then I can type in my DNA Star credentials. So when I click next, I will get this login message that will let me know how many individual assemblies that I have remaining on my license. So this is a really nice way to be able to quickly and easily keep track of, of my assembly credits for my projects here. So I'll click OK. And on the next screen, I'm going to go ahead and start a new cloud assembly. From the screen, you can also choose to upload your data files that you'll be using for your assembly project. So if I select this Upload Data button, I can see that we are now brought to the DNA Star Cloud Data Drive. And it's here that I can go ahead and upload, download, and manage all data files related to our assemblies. So I've already uploaded the files that I need for the assembly projects that I'll show you today, but I'm going to go ahead and point out some of the features here in the data drive. So in the top panel of the screen here, uh, I can see all of the folders and files that I've already uploaded to the cloud. And I can go ahead and open up any of those folders, and I can see that in some of these folders here I have some FASTQ files uploaded. Uh, go ahead and navigate. I can also create new folders easily. and then really easily um, drag and drop and move around different files um, to manage all of my data. And in the bottom part of the screen, this is, this is the area where you will be able to monitor the status of any folders that you are uploading or downloading from the cloud. Um, so you can see that you have the option here to upload a whole folder of files, uh, upload individual files, uh, as well as select, for example, any of these, um, you know, completed assembly projects and download them to your desktop computer here. Uh, again, within reorganizing and managing your data, you also have the option to delete any items from the cloud as well. But since I've uploaded what I need, I'm going to go ahead and close the data drive for now and then continue on through the next, uh, through the NGEN wizard here. So what I'll show you today is several E. coli genome assemblies that are run in parallel. However, as you can see from this project type screen, we do support a variety of other workflows. And we have full length videos and webinars on all of these other project types that you see here. Uh, so if any of these interest you, keep in mind that you can do these workflows on the cloud uh, just as we're setting up these genome assemblies today. Um, and we do have instructional support on how to set up these different project types. Um, but with that said, I'll go ahead and select genome assembly as our project type. And next, I'll choose to select the templated assembly with normal workflows. Again, we do support a few different assembly options here, including de novo assemblies, as well as a reference-guided assembly with gap closure. So this is good for um, 
you know, any of your small uh, bacterial genomes that you're trying to complete. Uh, again, we do have videos and webinars on, on these different um, types of workflows as well. So I'm going to go ahead and name my project. And I'll select um, my project folder. And what's important to remember here is that we're saving it to our cloud computer. So we'll be selecting a save location within the data drive here. So I can choose to select that folder we created earlier and choose that as our, our um, the file that we'll store our project files in. And now we're going to go ahead and input our template files for this assembly. Um, depending on what, time, uh, what type of organism that you're working with, you can choose to use any of our DNA star genome template packages. Uh, so if I open this here, uh, our genome template packages contain the template sequence, annotations, and the associated dbSNP, COSMIC, and GURP entries for that particular organism. Now we already have these uploaded to the cloud for you, so you can easily import these into your projects. And we can see that they, uh, we have genome template packages for a variety of different organisms here. Uh, however, I've already uploaded my E. coli reference sequence to the data drive, so I'll go ahead and add that to my project. I have this GBK file there. Uh, another thing to note is that depending on what type of project you're working on, you also have the ability to use VCF files at this step. So again, you can really, um, you know, if you have those VCF files stored on the data drive, really quickly um, browse and select that VCF file at this, this point in the assembly if you're, if you're looking for um, your custom set of SNPs. We also have information if you have um, Excel sheets of SNPs of interest on how to uh, configure those uh, Excel sheets into VCF files, so being able to make those custom VCF files for your projects. So um, we do have some tutorials and such on that as well if you're looking to use those files. Next, I'm going to go ahead and select my read technology. Uh, you can see from the drop-down that we do support uh, all major next-gen sequencing platforms. Uh, but I'm going here for this project, I'm using Illumina Reads greater than 50 nucleotides, so I'll select that. Uh, if you do notice, I have the multi-sample data box checked, which automatically selects the option to run as separate projects here. And I'm going to do this here so that I can automatically run several different strains of E. coli as separate assemblies at the same time. So that's really important if you're doing separate projects to make sure that you, you have this box checked here. Um, but what I'm going to do now is start loading in my data, and I can do that by selecting the folders that contain my FASTQ files for each strain out of the data drive. So if I select Add, uh, it'll open up the data drive for me here, and again, I showed you these folders earlier that contain my different FASTQ files for each particular strain of E. coli. And as I'm adding these in, I'll go ahead and name my experiments as I go. As you can see, really quick and easy um, as the desktop integrates with the cloud, so you can pull in your data. All right, so with that, I've set up my three different strains that I'll be running as uh, separate projects here. And select Next. Oh, one last thing to point here, so I'm using unpaired data here, but um, for, for many of our next-gen workflows, we do support uh, paired data and mate paired data as well. So on our last uh, screen in the SeekMan Engine wizard, um, I can choose to adjust any assembly options that I wish here. So in addition to some of these standard assembly options that you see here on the screen, I can also look at some advanced assembly options for my project, looking at layout options, alignment options, and SNP options as well. So for the majority of experiments, uh, using the default options uh, works completely fine, but you know we do have these options available if you uh, would like to adjust any parameters as you wish. 
So finally, our assembly is ready to begin. And by going step by step through the Seekman engine, assemblies on the cloud, uh, wizard interface, I've successfully written a script to run my assembly. And we can see at the top of the screen the confirmation that we'll be using three cloud assemblies uh, for this particular project. So again, just confirming with you that you are using those three assembly credits to run those three separate assemblies uh, in this project here. So once I click Assemble, uh, we'll see these assemblies start to spin up in the assembly log. So what it's doing right now is it's sending all this data up to the cloud uh, and spinning up all these assemblies here. So as this is working, I can uh, take any questions if we have any at this time. Yes, thanks, Jackie. We do have a couple. Um, you showed the data drive um, on your desktop here where you're also setting up your cloud assemblies. Um, so the question is, can you access the data drive from another computer, um, perhaps if your data is stored in a different place than where you um, typically do your work? Sure, so the data drive here is going to depend on where you have um, that LaserGene cloud license installed initially. So um, you would really have to look at how your network is set up. So if you have something set up on a network, obviously you could bring that down to that particular um, computer to add into the data drive. Um, and once it's in the data drive, then obviously it's available for all these cloud tools, but you do need this um, DNA Start Cloud Assemblies tool here um, on your desktop to be able to utilize those cloud options from the data drive. But you can log into the data drive from another computer as long as it's installed there. Right, correct? right, okay. exactly, yes. And then another question, um, is there a limit to the number or type of assemblies that you can perform using DNA Star Cloud Assemblies? Uh, no, our uh, Cloud Assemblies tool is virtually limitless, so um, you can run as many assemblies simultaneously as you'd like. And then just finally, um, a, a more technical question, I suppose, can the, uh, the read or fast queue files that you're using, um, can those be in a compressed format? Um, well, what the data drive automatically does is it will compress your files for you as you're uploading them to the cloud. So um, that step's already already done for you if you have those uncompressed files. Okay, great. Thank you. Thanks, Katie. So as we can see here in our assembly log that we've been able to successfully submit all three assemblies up to the DNA Star Cloud. Uh, so we'll click next to go ahead and start to monitor these projects. We'll give it one second to uh, finish loading here. As I let that load up, I'll, I'll show you another way quickly to uh, be able to monitor your assemblies, and that's by using our DNA Star web monitoring tool. And we can access this tool from two places. Uh, so first, you can find uh, a link to it from the navigator. So if we go to the DNA Star Cloud Assemblies button, uh, we can see that we have the link here to the DNA Star Cloud Assemblies web monitoring tool. Uh, we can also access this from our website. Uh, so if I go to our DNA Star website here, I'll want to go to the DNA Star Cloud page. And then under the DNA Star Cloud Assemblies area, we do have this option to monitor our assemblies. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this button here, uh, and that will bring us to our Cloud Assemblies page. Um, so. From this page, we can assess the number of assemblies on our license again. Uh, so we can see that now I have uh, 14 assemblies remaining on my license, uh, as well as monitor the progress of any assemblies that are running. So you can explore our legend to really easily learn the color coding uh, for how we qualify all of our assemblies that you can see in this list. Uh, so, for example, um, I ran these three assemblies yesterday. Um, they're all color-coded green, and they're done. These three assemblies we just started up today in our webinar, so we can see that they're in that um, nice orangey color there to let us know that they're starting. Um, depending on how many assemblies you have tied to your account, 
You can filter or choose to limit what assemblies are shown on the screen. And you can do this in a couple different ways. You can do it um, by sorting from this drop-down menu here. So if I only want to see the running assemblies, um, I, I notice that it only shows us the three that we've started here today. Um, we can also choose to, from this text box here, to type in the number of assemblies we'd want to want to see at the same time um, if we have lots and lots of assemblies associated with our account. Uh, one last thing I'd like to point out here uh, is the ability to take a peek into the completed files for these uh, assemblies here. So we can see that it opens up this screen, which allows us to take a look at some of these uh, files that are in our final assembly folder. So that's just one nice way uh, to be able to monitor the progress of our assemblies. Uh, so if you're on the go, you can quickly uh, access the DNA Star website and check the status of your assemblies from your phone or other mobile devices. So uh, back in the DNA Star um, Cloud Assemblies tool, we can see that we also have this nice ability to monitor our projects here as well. Um, this is on the next screen after our, our log, uh, after everything has been loaded up to the cloud. Um, so from this screen again, we have the option to see the status of our assembly projects. Uh, similar to the web monitoring tool, we do have the ability to filter by the assemblies that are running um, and um, you know, or the assemblies that are failed or the assemblies within the last days. So again, um, really, really nice interface to allow you to uh, quickly organize and navigate and manage your assembly projects there. So once all our assemblies are completed, I can choose to download the assembly folder from the data drive. And so we can choose to either do this on our local desktop, which we're on now, I'm, I'm just doing this on my laptop computer, uh, or on your virtual desktop. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get into my Amazon Workspaces account to both show you how DNA Star software works on Amazon Workspaces and uh, show you how this DNA Star software um, works in the virtual environment here. Um, Jackie, just before we move on from the cloud assemblies, um, we've had a sure. few people ask about um, cost, and specifically, um, is there a difference in um, price for a small microbial cloud assembly versus um, maybe a large de novo assembly that would require a lot of um, computing resources? That's a great question, Katie, and what is really nice about the DNA Star Cloud Assemblies tool is that um, there is no difference between the different types of assembly projects. So whether I'm doing a genome assembly or an exome assembly, um, you know, microbial versus human, it's all one DNA Star Cloud assembly credit. So, and again, as I mentioned, you can purchase, uh, you purchase those DNA Star Cloud assemblies by assembly. So there's really no difference between the project type um, between those. Okay, thank you, Jackie. Thanks. So if I'm looking at my desktop here, um, I can see that I have this Amazon Workspaces icon. And what I'm going to need to do is download and install Amazon Workspaces from Amazon's website. So if I open up my web browser here, I can go ahead and show you uh, the Amazon Workspaces client download page. And this page is nice because it really just lets you see um, the wide variety of platforms um, that you can install your Amazon Workspaces on. And so after downloading the appropriate installer and following the setup of Amazon Workspaces, you're going to be ready to go. Um, so I'm just gonna get out of my web browser, go back down to my desktop, um, quit, and open up my DNA Star Cloud or, um DNA Star Cloud Desktop on Amazon Workspaces. So once I have Amazon Workspaces open here, um, I'll just sign in with my DNA Star credentials. And it'll spin up my virtual machine. All right. And so if you're a first time user, um, 
once you get to this step, you'll then have the opportunity to enter in your DNA Star software license key and authorize your software. Uh, so once you've done that, you can see here that just like on my desktop computer, I do have the navigator with all the DNA Star applications installed on the cloud desktop. And you can see that this is running in our Amazon workspaces as well. So you can see the difference between my ground desktop computer and my Amazon workspaces virtual computer here. And uh, I, like I said, I have the Navigator with all the DNA Star applications installed here. And so from the uh, Navigator here, we can again choose to access any of our cloud applications. So um, we can go ahead and access our DNA Star data drive and thus have quick and easy access to all of our data and our completed assembly projects. So when you have the data drive opened up in the cloud desktop, I can pick any of my projects or files here and download them right to our uh, DNA Star Cloud desktop machine. And so you can see I have these couple projects that I'll be showing you today that I, I brought right down to the, the DNA Star Cloud desktop here uh, and took about 12 seconds, two seconds here. So really quick download speeds um, to get it on from, from your cloud data drive to this virtual workspaces machine here. So as an application of this, if my assemblies are running at work, I can choose to check in on them using the web monitoring tool. Uh, once I know that they're done, uh, whether I'm at home, at work, traveling at a conference, anywhere I have an internet connection, I can choose to open up my assembly results on my virtual machine here on the DNA Star Cloud desktop and immediately begin my analysis work. So right now, um, what I'm going to do is close this uh, and open up our SeekMan Pro application to show you. I'm going to move around these windows a little bit so I can show you the different views. So uh, SeekMan Pro is our application for assembly visualization. Uh, so SeekMan Pro allows you to look at uh, one assembly at a time and really um, look at these assemblies really closely, do some SNP analysis, um, and assess your contigs as well. Uh, so I'll walk you through a few of the different views here in SeekMan Pro um, as we look at one of these E. coli genome assemblies here. Um, so what we can see in the right-hand part of the screen, this is our contig window here. Um, which will display all of the contigs for your particular assembly project. So I only have one contig here, um, but for other next-gen projects, obviously you can have a long list of contigs that you can explore and look at. Um, so you can open up uh, any of the contigs into an alignment view by double-clicking on them from this window. And I have an alignment view here. This is our alignment view uh, window, and this allows you to look at any of the contigs in your assembly on the nucleotide level. Uh, I can look at any of the individual sequence reads and scroll through my contig. Um, within this alignment view, I can also choose to begin to perform edits on my assembly. Uh, we have advanced sequence editing capabilities present in SeekMan Pro, uh, which allow you to edit on the macro level, uh, correcting, or the micro level, I'm sorry, correcting individual bases and small insertions or deletions. Uh, or on the macro level, such as splitting contigs at an insertion. And we do have a webinar uh, in our webinars library that goes into great detail on sequence editing uh, for contigs. So I'd encourage you to check that out if that interests you. Uh, in addition to the alignment view, we also have the strategy view. And the strategy view allows us to analyze the coverage across our assembly. So we can see the depth of coverage here, um, as well as uh, some of our features and annotations, um, as well as some of the individual reads here as well. So if I scroll down, um, I can look at some of these individual reads. Uh, and the final view in SeekMan Pro that I'd like to talk to you about today uh, is our SNP report. So I can open that up by selecting SNP, SNP report. And within the SNP report here, uh, we can see a list of all the SNPs present in our assembly project. Uh, the number of SNPs that you'll see in the SNP report really depends on whether you adjusted some stringent filtering parameters in SeekMan Engine or your cloud assemblies before you ran the assembly. Um, but 
Additionally, we can utilize a wide variety of filtering options to narrow down our results within Seekman Pro as well. So if we choose the filter option, we can see uh, our SNP filter criteria here, allowing, allowing us to adjust some alignment options here, as well as some of the functional impact options as well to really uh, filter through the SNPs in our project. Uh, we can then work our way through the SNP report, uh, confirming or rejecting SNPs as we go. So we can really make those options as we move our way through the SNP report. Um, additionally, as we expand out the SNP report, we can see that there's um, many, many different columns of information on all of these SNPs as well. So all of these views within Seekman Pro are very highly interactive. So clicking on a specific SNP or location in any of the views will automatically sync you to that location in all other views. So you can see if I select uh, this SNP here, you can see that the SNP is selected both in the strategy view as well as the alignment view as well. So uh, with that, the last application I'd like to show you today is our ArrayStar application. And ArrayStar really rounds out our next-gen sequencing tools and allows you to perform more large-scale multi-sample data analysis. So as I mentioned, Seekman Pro here is perfect for looking at one assembly project, but when we want to make a comparisons across project, ArrayStar is the tool to use. And this tool will be especially useful to those of you who are taking advantage of the high throughput capacity of the DNA Star Cloud assemblies to complete many assembly projects in a short amount of time. So I'm going to close down Seekman Pro here, and I'll open up my ArrayStar project. And to show a different example today other than E. coli, what I have opened here is a project that compares three different transcriptome assemblies from different breeds of cattle. So we can see that we have a Cholestani, a Holstein, and a Jersey uh, assembly here. And we're looking here at the experiment list view where I have uh, my three assemblies grouped and then named after each breed. Uh, this experiment list view, obviously, if you're working with many different samples, um, you can choose to create new categories, uh, new replicate sets, uh, really group these however you'd wish to group them for analysis purposes. So here uh, I'll show you how to do some gene expression analysis work across the three breeds. So a benefit of ArrayStar is the variety of views that we have at our disposal to begin to conduct our analysis. So the first view I'm going to go ahead and show you today is our scatter plot view. Um, and this view here allows us to uh, look at two different breeds to compare um, their gene expression levels here. Um, and we can select genes at various fold changes. So um, from the side of the screen here, you can see that as I select some of these different fold changes that uh, Different genes are highlighted in white within the scatter plot. Um, if I clear the selection, I can show you that we can also just select individual genes. Um, we can see details about that particular gene in the details panel over here on the right. Um, we can also select different groups of genes. If I'd like to just select, you know, a few different outliers and take a look at those, you know, I can see these five selected genes. Um, there. So really just kind of working through being able to select some of these genes of interest here. Uh, for groups of selected genes, we can choose to use any of these actions below here. So uh, for example, if I've, you know, selected a, a particular fold change, uh, I can open up different tables uh, with information related to that. So for example, we do have an isoform table um, with information there as well. Um, additionally, uh, we can also go to the gene table to explore further. Um, so the gene table is quite customizable, um, being able to add in annotations or other information associated with these particular genes. So we can see that the way I have uh, the gene table set up now is uh, showing some Go annotations here, um, and the RPKM values for each of the breeds, as well as the feature type as well. 
Um, so again, as we're working through some of these different views, what I can also choose to do is create different gene sets. So for example, if I'm looking at the scatter plot and I'm interested in all of these genes at an eightfold change here, what I can do is choose to remember this particular selection as a gene set. And so I can name my set here and click OK. And this brings us to our set list. So you can see that, um, you know, I've already created several different sets of genes. Um, we can see a, a little mini gene table here at the bottom of the screen to see information about all the genes in that particular set um, that we can scroll through. And once we've gone ahead and created a, a variety of sets that we're interested in, uh, which we can view at any time from this, this set list view here, um, we can choose to compare these different sets using Venn diagrams to hone in on more specific groups of genes. So if I select my Venn diagrams view, um, we can see that we have this Venn diagram mode here for comparing two to three sets. Uh, we also have the dartboard mode available here uh, to compare large numbers of sets. So if we uh, find an interesting area uh, that we want to explore further, so let's say, for example, I'm interested in genes present in all of the three sets here. Uh, again, I can see details about this in the details panel here. Um, and again, I do have these, these nice options on the side where I can go back to the gene table just to see all of the selected genes in that group. And then I can choose to export um, the rows from that group uh, for further use uh, if I want to look at that list later. So with that, that wraps up my presentation today. Uh, to recap, what we learned is that we went over how to set up assemblies using assemblies on the cloud, uh, how to manage our NGS data on the cloud data drive, how to monitor our assembly projects using the web monitoring tool, and uh, how to use Amazon Workspaces as a virtual desktop to access DNA Star applications from anywhere with an internet connection. And then finally, how to use Seekman Pro and ArrayStar to analyze our NGS assembly results. So that wraps up my presentation today. Uh, I am available to take any questions at this time. Uh, yes, thank you, Jackie. Um, and as we are wrapping up here, uh, I do encourage um, our participants to, to send me any last minute questions via chat. Um, uh, one question, Jackie, that came up, um, you were showing workspaces, I think using that from your Windows computer, um, but you mentioned that workspaces is available for um, Mac as well as Windows and also some various kinds of tablets. And so the question is, is there any difference in the software functionality, say, if you're accessing workspaces um, or the DNA Star Cloud uh, from your iPad? Can you do all the same things that you showed um, on your Windows Workspaces application? Yeah, definitely. No, that, that's the, the great part of it is that, um, you know, you'll have all the same functionality on this virtual machine uh, across, um, you know, any, any platform that you choose to use it on. So you'll have that same, you know, highly accurate analysis capabilities of DNA Star software on any device that you choose to uh, use workspaces on. Okay, thank you. And then um, kind of circling back to the data drive, um, we talked about um, limitations to cloud assemblies and how um, it's, you know, basically limitless. Is the same true of the data drive? And are there um, excess costs with the data drive if you um, exceed any certain amount of storage? Nope, our data drive has an unlimited amount of storage, so uh, really great, again, for managing, uh, if you're doing a lot of high throughput studies, uh, lots of different data sets uh, needed for assembly uh, can all be stored up on the data drive and then accessed from a variety of computers. Okay, great, thank you. Um, and. Um, before we sign off, I just want to point out um, there are a, a, a large variety of videos on our website. If you go to our homepage and scroll down, you can click the videos link. And 
um, as Jackie mentioned, there are just a lot of different next-gen workflows that you can do, uh, including using cloud assemblies. And so if you need guidance on any of those particular workflows, um, I encourage you to look at the next-gen workflows videos. As you can see, we have a lot um, going into the different uh, read technologies as well as different project types. And here we also have some specific videos about our cloud workflows. And I think with that, we're going to sign off, but if we didn't answer any of your questions, we will follow up with you after the webinar. Or if you think of any more questions yourself, you can email us at webinars at dnastar.com. And um, also speaking of videos, we will have a recording of this webinar, so if you missed any part, um, you can check back with us um, probably later this week to see uh, the video recording. And we also will have um, future webinars, as Jackie mentioned, so if you would like to learn more, please, please join us again another time. Uh, thank you all so much for joining us today, and we look forward to seeing you again soon.